Let's do it. Another episode of the Buckeye Fever Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I am your host, Dave Holmes. Today, we're getting you ready for the battle of the eyes, the Hawkeyes against the Buckeyes, Iowa, Ohio State this Saturday at the shoot. But before we talk Iowa, I do want to talk about Michigan State briefly. The Buckeyes get a win over the Spartans. They're now 4-0 on the season, 1-0 in the Big Ten. A few things that stood out to me in that game. Will Howard, good bounce back performance after the interception. The interception Will Howard threw was by far his worst throw as a Buckeye. That was a bad throw at Kansas State. It's an even worse throw at Ohio State. But Will Howard is a very calm, demeanored guy. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low, which you want in a quarterback. And I think he's a good fit for Chip Kelly. He is a a leader. He can run it. He's big. He's tough. He's more JT Barrett than C.J. Stroud. But I think in this offense on this team – He's a good fit, and I like what I saw out of Will Howard. Jeremiah Smith. All right. I know this is not the Jeremiah Smith podcast, unless you want to sponsor it, Jeremiah. I've seen your NIL dollars. You could throw a few my way. It'd be all right. Uh, But look, he had two more touchdowns, one rushing, one in the air, two one-handed catches on the same drive. Unbelievable. I actually joked around with him a little bit about the rushing touchdown, um, you know, about him showing off his running back skills. Here, let's play a quick snippet of my interview with Jeremiah Smith after the game. Can we call it a three-headed monster now, you, Trey, and Quinshawn, now that you're a running back? <laughs> oh, yeah, a little bit. I could say, we could say the three-headed monster. Uh, I mean, it just feel excited to just be able to get that first rushing touchdown as a Buckeye, so I mean, it's all a blessing for sure. It's not supposed to be this easy, your first road game. How was that for you, for your first Big Ten road game? Oh, it felt good just coming into somebody else's um, territory and just taking taking uh, whatever our food, their food and just you know, winning the game. So, I mean, it's just great experience for me, just experience something different. He's so mature, too. I know people want to get into this battle of whose teenager is better, Alabama's or, or Jeremiah Smith. I don't think it matters. I just think Jeremiah Smith is the most talented freshman I've ever seen at Ohio State. The other guy who can make that case is Maurice Claret, but I think it's easier to break in as a running back than a receiver, especially in Jeremiah's room, which has always been loaded with first-round talent. Number four is truly the guy, but number two is really good as well. And I do want to talk about Emeka Abuka. Because part of the reason Jeremiah can actually get coverage that he can beat is because people respect Abuka. And if you look at Emeka's last three games, 5 for 98, 5 for 117 and a touch, 7 for 96 and a touch, he is just quietly putting together an impressive campaign. And while all the eyeballs and hype go to Jeremiah Smith, Emeka Abuka is showing why he's going to be a first-round draft pick. He is that good. This Buckeye offense is just embarrassingly good at the skill positions. I do want to ask or talk about one defensive player, though, Caleb Downs. To me, this was Caleb Downs' coming out party for the country. Uh, Caleb Downs, the plays he made against Michigan State, this kid closes faster than a spirit Halloween on November 1st. I mean, some of those plays where he would come up 10 to 12 yards from the safety spot and make a tackle for a loss, to me, that was his best game as well. So, a good effort for the Buckeyes. Things only get more difficult from here, but I think you should be encouraged that even on a game that wasn't their best night, they still dominated a road game in the Big Ten. Coming up next on the Buckeye Fever podcast, Tim May stops by. He's covered this team for four decades, and we're going to talk about some of the best traditions in college football. Stay with us. Well, yeah, this week the Buckeyes host the Iowa Hawkeyes, and I understand it's a home game for the Buckeyes, but whenever I think of Iowa, I think of one of the best traditions in college football, the wave there where the fans turn around and wave at the Children's Hospital. And I thought, who better to talk about college traditions than Tim May, a man who's lived through, oh, I don't know, about four decades of them. How's it going, Timmy? It's going sideways, my man. How's it going with you, Dave? (laughs) It's going good. So I tried to bring in my experienced guests for a topic like this. So I understand that we're not playing at Iowa, it's at home, but what are some of the other traditions that you think of when you think of the best college football traditions? By the way, I think when I first started covering Ohio State football back in 1984, and and I was even out there for a game before that, uh, I don't think that hospital was even there. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. (laughs) And uh, the press box was sort of a band box. But, uh, you know, you always – it sounds kind of stupid, but you – you kind of like some of the little trophy games Ohio State played for, not the least of which was the Illibuck way back when because, you know, people don't remember Ohio State. Well, of course they don't remember. They didn't live through it. I didn't even live through it. But Ohio State used to end its regular season uh, uh, playing Illinois, not yeah. Michigan, way back in the day. Isn't that crazy to think and of? And so the Illibuck, you know, if you weren't going to the – and even then, you know, back then the Big Ten champion didn't necessarily go to a Rose Bowl or any other bowl for yeah. that matter. 
but they played for the Illibuck, uh, which was a painted turtle, I guess, until I guess it started smelling one year, you know. Uh, what happened to the turtle? Oh, somebody forgot to feed him. Uh, no, I'm just joking. But uh, I just thought those the way the, all these little trophy games started in the Big Ten was, you know, the Paul Bunyan axe mm-hmm. right on down the road. I, th- I just thought that was who came up with a turtle, you know, and uh, what was his significance. So that was an example. And, of course, from a tradition standpoint, the great thing about the game, the trophy for the game ended up being the Big Ten Championship trophy. Is that you funny? Know what I mean? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, Michigan and Ohio State were playing for that, especially from the late 60s on. And uh, so, uh, but from a tradition standpoint, having to do with Ohio State, I'm not, you know, it's, there's nothing really coming to mind too much. Uh, well, it's dot the I, right? Well, yeah, but that's, yeah. That's not playing for something. That's uh, doing something. Yes. What ruined it for me is when Jack Nicholas dotted the I that year, there was a camera, a TV cameraman, I think, and uh, his, what do you call it, the cord puller? Yeah, yeah, the, the grip. The grip, the, yes. his key grip. Uh, in anybody's photos of that, they're in the photo, it's too. It's the worst. It's the worst. It's the, and nowadays, got, it's cell phone guy who's you, walking right in front of the you've coach. You've got TV cameras that can shoot a fly on a horse's rear end <laughs> right. from 9,000 yards, yeah. and you've got to be that close to yep. Jack Nicholas. It's interesting because Richard Lewis, I used to text with all the time, the comedian who graduated from Ohio State back in the, what, the late 60s, mm-hmm. early 70s. He, he kept sort of like semi uh, – Low key campaigning, to yeah. dot the eye. Sometime. He wanted to dot that eye. Yeah, and he was Grand Marshal of the Homecoming. I think it. I think twice, maybe, yeah. but he wanted to dot that eye, but it never got around to him. And of course, unfortunately, he passed away this past year. Uh, w- w- really, an interesting dude. But the dotting of the eye, it's a big deal, man. Play like a champion today. To me, that that's an all timer. Just slapping the sign. I like that one. I'm a big fan of anyone who runs across the field because I'm talking Colorado. Where they, I think technically it's a bison that they run across, and, and there's some animal people are going to say it's not a real buffalo. It's a bison. And who cares? Who He's, cares? He seems semi out of control. And I love Oklahoma too with the stagecoach because in both of those there Sco- are sooner schooner. S- yes, there you it's go. Not a stagecoach. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Sooner schooner and Ralphie's Run, I believe is yes, Colorado. Yes, Ralphie's. But I love it because I'm one of those sick guys who you know if you go to the fair and there's like the steer showing, yeah. I'm kind of secretly rooting for the steer. I want some drama. Of I want to see a couple. I don't want anyone to get hurt. But I want to see some bucking. I want to see some. And for me, when you got a bison running, or as we've seen with the Sooner Schooner, they'll tip it every now and then. So to me, there's at least an element of danger there that I'm a fan of. I agree. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bevo on the sideline for Texas. Yeah. He's a longhorn steer standing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, looks pretty placid. But you don't <laughs> right? want to mess with him probably. You, you know, wouldn't want to. My, he, he's placid he's, until he's not. Yeah, my, my baby brother, who's 66, I always like to say that, <laughs> uh, uh, he has a couple of longhorn steers on his gentleman weekend uh, ranch in uh, outside LaGrange, Texas. Mm-hmm. Mm, LaGrange. <laughs> um, Home on LaGrange. You, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's ZZ Top. But, uh, but you don't want to mess with a, you know, for example, live – any kind of live animal on yes. the sidelines, yeah. uh, even Uga, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure when push yeah. comes to shovel, throw down. Oh yeah, Uga's thrown down a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand yeah. it. You know, University of Georgia, uh, a bull bulldog. Okay, let me hit you with this. If we stay in the Big Ten, which one do you like better? Jump around at Wisconsin or a whiteout at Penn State? Personally, for my own safety, <laughs> I like a whiteout at Penn State because you don't trust the structural integrity of Camp Randall Stadium. Dude, when you're sitting in a concrete and steel structure, it's freaky. And you know, I know I've been wagging a lot right here while we're talking because that's the way I do. And but you're going like this, you're swaying back and forth, concrete and steel. It, yes, and it, it's done that every time I've ever been up there. It, Sometimes it does it when there's a big touchdown. I don't know how <laughs> that's old. That's unsettling. How old is Camp Randall? I don't know what the current. It's been around for a minute, so it I don't know. It was a camp to begin with. So. Was a camp, right? Yeah, it was. It wasn't building yeah. Randall. It was Camp Randall. Yeah. So and when, yeah, and it's who, been expanded a couple of times. Who definitely. knows what yeah. the building code was Since back in the there. day? But, I, you know, this, they built that far before House of Pain started coming out with their one hit. But that press box we sit in today, even the actual press box part, mm-hmm. not the other suites and stuff they've added in and around the place. Uh, that's that's the same press box that I walked into in 1984. I guess that's part of tradition, but it's kind of nouveau tradition. Yeah. Because they didn't always do the jump around because that song wasn't even around. It was the early 90s, right? House of yeah. Pain, one hit wonder. Yeah. I mean, the other ones for me, I love the 
kind of the live dress up element of like a Florida State Seminole pregame, the USC, the Trojan sword stab. I'm a fan of those things too. Yeah, with a horse involved. Oh, get, yeah, gotta have a horse involved. Traveler and uh, whatever the Seminole horse is, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 You did kind of like that idea of live. Of, uh, yeah, though, even the War Eagle, yeah. like anything could happen. Yeah. See, the thing about Ohio State, what hinders Ohio State is their live guy is a guy dressed up as a tree nut. <laughs> <laughs> who who apparently so, could have won gold in the uh, but gymnastics. But as we well know, Incredible the gymnast. Bobcat from Ohio U mm-hmm. decided to take on the nut. Yeah. And I think the Bobcat from OU actually ended up losing in the long run. Yes. But don't mess with a poisonous nut. He will get you in the end, if, especially if you have to take a bite. Don't mess with a poisonous nut. I think we'll end it on that. Tim May, thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. I do want to thank Tim May, one of my favorite people. In all of Buckeye journalism, you know, you go to a news conference, they normally give Tim May the last question, and he's always like, hey, hey, Ryan, hey, Ryan, hey, Tim May, I, I got three quick questions, four quick follow-ups, you know what I mean? You feel me? You get what I'm saying? You know? You know what I mean? Uh, I love <laughs> I love Tim May. Uh, one of my golfing buddies, too. Great golfer. Anyway, so thanks to Tim for swinging by there. Uh, Iowa, let's talk about these Hawkeyes. Three and one, their only loss was a one-point loss to Iowa State. This weekend, we get a Luke Lachey homecoming. So when I think about Iowa, it is tight end university. When I like when I think about Ohio State, it is wide receivers. When I think about Wisconsin, it's running backs. Iowa always produces good tight ends. Luke Lachey, he is the son of Jim Lachey. We all know Jim, former All American linebacker lineman for the uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes, and now he's on the broadcast team with Paul Keels doing the game each Saturday. So we hope Luke has a great game. I want him to have 150 yards and zero touchdowns. Luke, we don't need you to find the end zone, but we want you to enjoy your last game here at the shoe. His offense, though, is actually pretty decent. All right, so I was 66th in total offense, which by Iowa standards is like the old Houston Oilers run and shoot. I mean, a 66th ranked Iowa offense is something. If you're not familiar with the story of Iowa offense, for many, many years, Iowa played offense like they were leather helmets, okay? For many years, I've heard, I can't confirm, I've heard Iowa their local broadcasts are actually in black and white, just so it can mirror their offensive strategy. Because for years, their offensive coordinator was Brian Ference. And you're thinking, gee, Dave, Brian Ference, is he related to their head coach, Kirk Ference? Of course, of course. So that's his son, all right? So Kirk Ference employed his son for a million dollars a year to run the worst offense, the most archaic offense, the most Jurassic offense in the Big Ten. And finally, Kirk Ference had enough. More importantly, the fans had enough. It was the worst nepotism I've ever seen. And look, I'm fine with, if you have a plumbing company and you want to leave it to your kids, knock yourself out. A friend of mine, his parents own a garage door company. It will one day be his. Knock yourself out. But nepotism in the Big Ten, probably not the best place for it. So they get rid of Brian Ferentz. They bring in Tim Lester. Now, Tim Lester is a former head coach at Western Michigan, and the Broncos had a really good offense with him at the helm. He was also, I believe, an assistant last year for the Green Bay Packers when Jordan Love had the best season of his career. So this offense is actually passable. We'll see how the Buckeye defense handles them. I still think OSU is going to shut them down. They're not good. They're just Iowa good. But the defense on Iowa is always solid. They're 18th in the country this year. Once again, a very good defense. So that's what I'm looking forward to most. If you want to poke a hole in Ohio State, it's the fact they haven't played anyone yet. Michigan State was their biggest challenge, and if we're being honest, that's not a huge challenge. So to me, this will be the first chance to see Ohio State with their two-headed monster of Quinshawn and Travion. Can they run it down the throat of a team that prides itself on not letting teams run it down their throat? So for me, that's the, the matchup I'm looking forward to most. The Ohio State offensive line rebuilt this year, the rebuilt running game with Chip Kelly against that Iowa defense. Hey, coming up next, a familiar face stops by the Buckeye Fever podcast, Clay Hall. Former sports director here at ABC6. He joins us and we talk about some of our horror stories over the years covering the Buckeyes on the road. Stay with us on the Buckeye Fever Podcast. Okay, I realize this week's game against Iowa is at home, but whenever I think of Iowa, I think of the worst road experience of my life covering football for the Buckeyes. And and I wanted to talk about some of these crazy stories that happen on the road. So for that, (laughs) we bring in a guy who occupied my post for all of 29 years before so kindly relinquishing it to me. Uh, Clay Hall, how's it going, Clay? Good to have you back here. Iowa, bad for you too? Yeah, so, okay. 
I'll get to my story in a minute here. Have you had any bad run-ins with Iowa? Has that been a bad... Twice. Okay, give me some Iowa stories. So, back in the dark ages, the early 2000s, um, we had a sat truck outside the stadium, and it was going to be a situation where you shoot the post, then you run the mm. tape outside yeah. back in the uh, <laughs> different era. And I ran uh, just sprinting to get it to a tape player to get it on the air. I run into a beam at Kinnick Stadium, and the beam was not friendly. Um, Beams don't give. They don't, and the head does. Um, so I, I'm kind of like, yeah, all right, that hurt. That kind of stunned me. Mm -hmm. Get to the truck, whatever. They put the tape in, and I get in front of the camera, and the producer says, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> I go, what do you mean? I go, what? what, what? <laughs> He says, you are bleeding from the forehead. <laughs> and <laughs> I said, well, somebody in the truck, give me a, help yeah. me out here. Well, and it just, it was a rough, rough day. You look like Anderson Cooper, like oh. reporting from a war zone. Yeah. Look what happened to Clay We're Hall. We're in Serbia now. <laughs> right. Uh, so that was one. Uh, the other was, if you remember the urban meltdown or the, uh. you know, the, the debacle year. The debacle. Okay, this is, my story's going to be the same game. Go pick, on. Pick six. You know, on I the, remember. What was yeah. the first play of the game? Yes, it was. Uh, so I think we had a four-person crew. We pack up. We start walking around, and that gate's not open. This gate's not open. Uh-oh. And you start to realize you're probably among the last five people yeah. in Kinnick Stadium. Yeah. So uh, what happened was we had no, it would be egress. We had yeah. no, yeah. So, you know, Mike Jones, uh, MacGyver on the road, yeah. incredibly. Photographer extraordinaire at ABC6. No doubt about it. So we start calling, you know. <laughs> we <laughs> call the operator, the campus operator. You know, we finally got security. They finally came about 15, 20 minutes later. So it's funny. That game was my worst travel story. It, first of things first, I, that's back when I'm at 10 TV. Oh, the, getting to the game. Yes. Yeah, so, so that was during my 10 TV era. And they booked us, I think it was called like something budget economy. Whatever it was, they made us shove the camera in the overhead. And yeah. or and we had to check it maybe. But whatever it was, the camera got broken. So we get there on our cameras. So there's no zoom function. So the whole game we're gonna be in trouble. And mm -hmm. I get into the press box and they said, Sorry, we don't have a seat for you. I said, Well, I requested one. Yeah, we filled up. And I said, No worries, there are a few dozen. I mean, it's, it's Iowa, right? I said, There's a lot of empty seats here, I'll grab one. And the guy says, Well, no, that's the we need to keep those in case they show up. I thought, yeah, all right, it's not my first game. There's gonna be empty seats. So I go and I sit down in some other guy's seat. And it's, I don't know, it's, game's going to start in about 20 minutes. This guy comes up to me and says, uh, excuse me, sir, that's not your seat. You're Dave Holmes from 10TV. This is so-and-so from ESPN.com. I said, yeah, well, he's, he's not here, clearly. He said, no, you need to get up and, and I'm move. here. Uh-huh. So I, I, he makes me get up. So he goes away, and I thought, all right, he's going away at some point. So I go, and I sit in another seat. <laughs> and he comes over and says, uh, excuse me, sir, you are not so-and-so. You're Dave Holmes from 10 you need to, you need to, he moves me a second time. So I do it a third time. I think this guy's got to go away. And he finally comes up to me. Now he's going to be sarcastic. And he says, excuse me, sir, are you, uh, you know, Jonathan so-and-so of the Lima Gazette? And I said, yes, I am. And I put my hand out to shake it. And he says, no, you're not. You're Dave Holmes from 10 TV. You need to go. I said, they're not going to be here. I know these beat guys. They aren't at the game. Can I please sit here? He says, no. He has the police escort me out of the press box. I was a common criminal. And this security guy said, what'd you do? I said, I sat in some beat writer's seat after I was asked not to. They escort me down to the field. The police do. And said, you have to watch the game on the field. As I'm on the way down, I hear the biggest roar I've ever heard. And it's the oh, JT Barrett pick six that you mentioned. So <laughs> the game in which the Buckeyes got throttled mm. was probably the best part of the trip for me. The, the game itself which was terrible, but I never have a good experience up there. I've heard a lot of stories about the Dave Holmes rap sheet, but now now <laughs> yes. I see now I see the well, the serious nature of your crimes. It took me a lot of uh, a lot of time to clear the background check when I replaced you. It was a very I mean they had to go through every every single case. Did you have anything else crazy ever happen to you on the road that sticks out to you? 
Uh, Madison, uh, you get to between the third and the fourth, mm-hmm. and here comes jump around. Yeah, right. And, and you're waiting, and you're like, you've heard all this stuff about it. Yeah. And they start it, and the press box begins to sway. You feel it rocking. And I don't mean just yeah. The I mean it was like no. It's almost I, motion sickness. You, I started. I started looking at people like, is this is are we okay? <laughs> the structural integrity is this normal? Because you you see yourself in a headline under the rubble of Camp Randall <laughs> right. in Madtown. Am- among the dead was Clay Hall tonight. Yes. ABC Six Sports <laughs> right, Director right. does not survive the fall. Right. Yeah. Um, that and another. Um, I don't recall the year Wisconsin. So I'm doing a stand. I'm doing a live shot on the field. And the band begins to do their, uh, they do like a post-game concert. Yes, yes. And I guess I was in the way. And I'm talking, and people at, at here are like, what's going on there, Clay? It looks like you have some friends. Yeah. And, and it got to be rather, um, yeah, confrontational. <laughs> and, and I was kind of like, yeah. you know. Cal Stanford, uh, you're throwing elbows at the tuba. Uh, the tromb- uh, Yeah, the trombone <laughs> player. I'm like, come on, buddy. Right. Uh, let me do my job. Yeah. And uh, you find out life is rough on the road. I mean, <laughs> it is. And they just, yeah, they, they never miss the beat. It really is. Well, Clay, thanks for swinging by. And, and Buckeye fans, this week, let's show Iowa the hospitality that maybe <laughs> they haven't always shown us up there at Kinnick Stadium. Thanks again to Clay Hall, not only for being a good guy, but for my employment. I have salary and health care because of you, Clay Hall. I owe you for that. Thanks again to Tim May and also Jeremiah Smith for taking the time to talk to us. And thank you to you for listening to this episode of the Buckeye Fever Podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe it, five star, leave a positive review. My mom said if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Uh, So anyway, appreciate you all listening. Next week, it's the big one. We're getting ready for the Oregon Ducks. So don't you dare go anywhere. Come back next week on the Buckeye Fever Podcast.